What's going on, you guys? It's Nick Johnson, your favorite sports YouTube journalist here, back with another video. And today, I'm going to give you another update in the world of sports, especially the Monday Night Football, the World Series, and no other notable transactions going on. So, before I get started, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell com button, where you get my update and notifications of my videos for the upcoming future. And with that being said, let's get started. And of course, yesterday, we had a Monday Night Football action between the Los Angeles Rams hosting the Chicago Bears. In a battle in which was going to be like the top two defenses against scoring off against one another to see who was the superior squad. Of course, we all expected both offenses were going to be quiet, as we all know it. And the Rams, with their defense, came out on top with a 24 to 10 victory over the Chicago Bears. And like I said, both offenses were expected to be quiet, but the Rams had a little bit of scoring from their offense, despite a quiet night from Jared Goff and a running game, but it was still enough to get it done. Of course, Malcolm Brown had a touchdown on the ground, the ball 57 yards on 10 carries. Gerald Everett and uh, Josh Reynolds each caught a touchdown pass from Jared Goff. And the Rams' defense proved to be the superior squad as they um, sacked uh, Nick Foles four times and forced two interceptions off of him, including a late interception with over three to go in the fourth quarter from Jalen Ramsey that ended all of any hope of a Chicago Bears comeback in that one. So, big win for the Rams. They further up, up their lead or rather trying to get back into the lead for the uh, NFC West division only trailing the Seattle Seahawks who had their first loss of the season last night again uh, two nights ago against Arizona so it's going to be an interesting race and of course some other updating breaking news that I got um, the Dallas Cowboys have traded away um, defensive end Everson Griffin to the Detroit Lions for a conditional six round draft pick for uh, next year's draft of course, this was a um, a move that was expected to happen because yesterday Griffin uh, was reportedly to be put on the uh, trade block um, sometime yesterday after Dallas recorded yet another embarrassing loss at the hands of the Washington football team, a nameless Washington football team, so which is expected, and it was a blowout by all sorts, and the defense was just basically lackluster and got off of this season. So apparently this could be like a fresh start for a squad that's just looking for some type of spark and some type of adjustments. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's uh, come coming by next offseason. So with that being said, the Cowboys get a conditional six-round pick for the Lions, who are trying to mount a comeback of their own to get back into the race for the NFC South Division, if not at least a wild card spot. Because they just came back from a uh, miraculous come-from-behind win over the uh, Atlanta Falcons on Sunday. So, this could be a big chance to bolster up their defensive line. As you all remember, Everson Griffin was an all-pro stud defensive lineman for almost his entire career with the Minnesota Vikings, where he was one of the league's best pass rushers at that time. And um, those last couple of years have kind of been like a, uh, a tail-off for him. So, and he thought he was going to be that... Big key piece missing for Dallas defense looking for its spark, but apparently he wasn't. So this could be a real fresh start and hopefully a new identity for him on the Detroit Lions team that's trying to make its name defensively and trying to get back into um, playoff contention and some sort of relevancy. So, yeah, big move for the Lions to get a guy of that caliber. Hopefully he'll reclaim exactly what type of um, guy that he once was when he was in Minnesota. And, of course, um, former All-Pro wide receiver and former longtime Dallas Cowboy, uh, Des Bryant, was signed to the uh, Baltimore Ravens practice squad. And of course, there was some interest in seeing exactly where Des Bryant was going to go, considering the fact that he hasn't played a football game in exactly three years. Since his like, final year with the Dallas Cowboys, after the great, magnificent, all pro and pro bowl seasons with the squad especially that one year where he had a career year in 2014 with over 1500 yards receiving and uh, 16 total touchdowns in 2014 you know the uh, supposedly one year quadruple uh, triplets with him Tony Romo and DeMarco Murray who are no longer in the NFL so I mean it's like whatever especially for a guy that's just still looking to play football I mean last year or was it two years ago? One of the two. Um, no, rather, it was two years ago. He was signed 
to a one-year contract with the New Orleans Saints after holding on the free agent market. But then two days into uh, practicing for his new club, he tra- he unfortunately tore his Achilles and was out for that season. And of course, he wasn't able to find a home because he was still recuperating. He sat out. He was basically he sat out for the entire 2019 season as a result. And with that being said, he's just basically no longer the guy that he once was when he was in Dallas. And it's just basically like a um, a practice squad um, officiate to probably mentor the um, Ravens wide receiver group. So, yeah, I mean, at least he's got a home and he's, at least he has another chance to play football once more. So congrats to him. Now, let's talk about the World Series. As we all know, the Dodgers, after blowing a chance to win Game 4 on Saturday night to go up 3-1, to one, were able to redeem themselves on Sunday behind a gutsy performance from Clayton Kershaw to win a 4-2 to two, and a strength of their offense, will have a chance to clinch their first World Series since 1988. First World Series title since 88 with a win tonight in Game 6. On the mound, they're going to go with, once again, Tony Gonsolin, who got the uh, nod in Game 2, but gave up a run on, on one in the third inning of play. And he'll go opposite Blake Snell, who had who was really strong in Game 2 before he before he had a chance to uh, get that qualified start. He was pulled with two outs in the um, fifth inning due to the fact that he was giving up momentum to the Dodgers' offense when it was coming alive, so... And, of course, this is a must-win scenario for Tampa Bay, who is trying to force a decisive Game 7 tomorrow night. So if Blake Snell can continue his uh, masterful performance here in the playoffs, then Tampa Bay will have a chance to force a Game 7 tomorrow night. But if Tony Gonsolin can somehow find his rhythm, because he's been struggling throughout this, these entire playoffs, if he can go have a solid performance and go five and six innings of work without having to deal with any problems whatsoever then the Dodgers will have a shot to clinch it all tonight. Like I said, the Dodgers have not won a World Series since 1988, since the uh, Kirk Gibson home run and the dominance of Oral Hershiser and company, Oral Hershiser and company, to, um, to secure their top place as the most dominant team in the league. Of course, Tampa is still searching for its first in franchise history, so it can go either way, but me... With a little bit of bias, I'm a Dodger fan, and I really, really hope they clinch it tonight. So the pressure is going to be on Gonsolin to at least get it done, and it's sure as well going to be on the offense to back him out and bail him out of certain situations. So, yeah. And, of course, with that being said, that's all I have for today in the world of sports. I'll promise to talk about other things tomorrow, but I'm still trying to get used to it, and it's been a while since I've talked about hockey. I'm going to give you, like, a, in another video on recap of... um the NHL offseason, because it's still going. And it probably won't start until, like, late in December, maybe. So I'll promise my time to uh, talk about that. Well, then, with that being said, that's all I have for today's update in the world of sports. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure to hit that bell com button where you get my uh, notifications, where you see my upcoming videos going on as time goes on. And let me know what you think in the comments section. Like, um, do you think the Rams have a legit shot in the Super Bowl run? Do you think the Dodgers have a chance to uh, clinch tonight? Like, what do you guys think? So let me know what you think. And uh, with that being said, this is Nick Johnson. I'm your favorite sports YouTube journalist. And I'm out. Peace.